Welcome back to the Beginner's Guide to the Modern Theory of Polarization, a series of modules to help you understand how the electric polarization is defined, calculated and measured in bulk periodic solids, brought to you by Schrodinger's Kittens Productions. Module 3, the polarization quantum. In the last module, we saw that the polarization in a bulk periodic solid is not a single value, but instead has a series of values. Since these values are regularly spaced, like the atoms in a crystal lattice, we call the series the polarization lattice. The spacing between the values in the polarization lattice is known as the polarization quantum, and in this module, we'll look at why this polarization quantum exists and what it means. I think it's easier to discuss the polarization quantum with a three-dimensional example. And so we'll put our dipole in a 3D unit cell with a lattice vector of length A in the direction of the polarization, here it's the Z direction, and unit cell volume V. In anticipation of what's coming next, we'll write the charges on our ions in terms of the electronic charge E and assume that the anion has a charge minus E and the cation a charge plus E. Then the polarization, taking this unit cell as the reference, is the dipole moment per unit volume, which is E times D divided by V. When we worked in one dimension, we found E times D over A because we normalized to the unit cell length rather than the volume. If we take this unit cell as our reference, and the left edge of the cell is the zero Z value, then we obtain the value E times D over V minus E times A over V for the polarization. Or in general, the polarization in the Z direction of this 3D lattice is E times D over V plus N times E times A over V, where E A over V or E times the lattice vector over V is the polarization quantum. So what does this polarization quantum mean? Well, let's do a thought experiment and look at what happens if we take an electron off one of our anions and we move it to the next anion in the unit cell to the right. Like this. How does this change the polarization? Well, since we've moved a charge of minus E over a distance A, the change in polarization is charge times distance over volume, which is minus E times A over V or minus E times the lattice vector over V. But notice that moving this electron has not changed the physical system. Because of the periodic boundary conditions, when one anion transfers an electron one unit cell to the right, every other anion also transfers an electron in the same way, and so we end up back where we started. So we can conclude that moving an electronic charge by any lattice vector in a crystalline periodic solid leaves the physical system unchanged. But Moving the charge changes the polarization by an amount equal to the charge on the electron multiplied by the lattice vector divided by the unit cell volume. As a result, the polarization of a crystalline periodic solid can only be defined modulo this quantity, E times R over V, which we call the polarization quantum. This week's exercises are to help you develop some intuition for the polarization quantum, which I admit is not the most intuitive concept. You'll calculate the polarization and the polarization quantum for our chain of dipoles for two new cases. First, with the volume of the unit cell doubled by doubling the length of the lattice vector Rz. And second, with the volume of the unit cell doubled by doubling the surface area perpendicular to Z, but keeping Rz the same. 
In both cases, you'll keep the nearest neighbor distance between the ions equal to D. And look at how your calculated polarization lattice and your polarization quantum change in both cases. When you're happy with your answers, come back and join us for module four in the series, when we'll show that this weird multi-valuedness of the polarization is not so problematic after all. Thanks for listening.